In 2020, demand suddenly increased for ventilators to treat pneumonia in COVID-19 patients. One engineer is attracting global attention for the ventilators he designs to suit specific needs. Chan Gok Fuk continues to find new ideas during the pandemic for practical products that can be manufactured at a low cost. If you simply connect the machine and uh, switch it on, they won't die. Every problem has a solution. He discusses his technology and innovative ideas to confront the COVID-19 pandemic. A medical equipment manufacturer north of Tokyo in Saitama Prefecture. Chan established the company in 1984. Born in Vietnam and now a naturalized Japanese, Chan Gok Fuk is wearing a prototype mask he's currently trialing. Ventilators pump air into the lungs to assist patients with pneumonia and other illnesses to breathe. This precision medical equipment supports life. In the laboratory, research is conducted into improving the ventilator's performance using handmade lungs. Chan first set his sights on a ventilator for newborn babies. In the 1980s, the newborn mortality rate was still high and there was demand worldwide for specialized neonatal ventilators. I was taken to the neonatal intensive care unit, and I saw all these poor babies lined up in their incubators. They asked me, Hook, what do they look like? I replied, they're cute, to which they responded, they're not just cute. Don't they look like angels? I had a good look at each and every one of them, and I could see it in all of them. You know, angels bring us dreams in the future, and that's when it occurred to me that some angels must find it hard to do their job. The small lungs of a premature baby require different, more precise technology to that of adults. So Chan took a novel approach to developing his neonatal ventilator. Standard high-frequency oscillation ventilators use valves which open and close to feed oxygen into the lungs. But they're not designed to make fine adjustments, so they place a burden on premature lungs. to experiment with a piston-type ventilator for precision movement. The tiny amounts of oxygen fed each time, up to a maximum of 900 times per minute, put less pressure on small, underdeveloped lungs. Japan's neonatal mortality rate dropped from 3.4 to 0.9% in three decades, now one of the lowest in the world. Chan's ventilator saved many babies' lives. One message says, I go to school every day. When I grow up, I want to be a motorcycle patrol policeman. Chan, originally from Vietnam, recognizes a particular need for neonatal ventilators, and this spurs him in his work. Chan was born in what was then South Vietnam in 1947. While a university student, he came to Japan in 1968 to study industrial chemistry. A 
However, during the Vietnam War, Saigon fell, and Chang could not return to his homeland. With nowhere to go, he decided to stay in Japan. After graduation, he worked for a medical equipment manufacturer. Then, at age 36, he decided to create his own company to make ventilators. You have to remember that Japanese society at the time was still very closed for foreigners. And it was difficult for us to assimilate and to have our own identity. To survive, I felt the only way people would accept me for who I was was if I found a line of work that no one else was doing. And when I looked into medical equipment, I found that no Japanese companies were manufacturing neonatal ventilators. A foreign-made ventilator was faulty, the child would die. I discovered that no company anywhere wanted to take the responsibility to fix them. Well, I thought, why don't I manufacture ventilators? Chan has also developed another original ventilator. This one for animals. Many animals have lost their lives due to the non-existence of dedicated ventilators. The machine is small and easy for vets with no experience with ventilators to use. In 2020, he refined the design and created a new model to meet the increased demand for ventilators to treat COVID-19 patients with pneumonia. <laughs> Put very simply, humans are animals. Most troubling about COVID-19 is the pneumonia. Pneumonia has been identified as a distinct symptom, so therefore we could safely develop a ventilator with the specific functions needed in a short space of time. For example, you can't easily take many expensive ventilators into remote parts of Vietnam or rural parts of Africa where they have no specialists at all. This model, specifically for COVID-19 patients, is simple and very cheap to produce. Ventilators are usually nowhere near this cheap. Ours is about 5,800 US dollars less than $10,000. A normal ventilator costs about $60,000, even $100,000. No matter how you look at it, this is not a small amount of money. And the reality is, poor countries cannot afford it. This factory in Vietnam, which Chan built in 2008, has now begun producing the new COVID-19 ventilators. At the end of 2020, after passing rigorous protocols, he visited his native Vietnam to deliver the new ventilators to hospitals. Originally, um, that was not the plan at all. But looking back on it now, I sought to find a solution to the complications everyone had run up against. You cannot really rely on past research or knowledge or history or experience. And my way of thinking is that you cannot solve problems when you come up head first against a brick wall, unless you come up with something new. In 2017, Chan founded a new company to produce different machines. It is now conducting research and development into new products to prevent the spread of COVID-19.
These two young employees are from Vietnam. I see myself 50 years ago. <laughs> Right now, the mask is allowing in safe air, and I'm breathing in here using my own uncontaminated air. We are checking the composition of the mask to see if it allows in virus-contaminated air from the outside. We are using a fluid mechanics computer program to calculate if any outside air is getting in and how this construction affects the flow rate. That is what we're simulating right now. Chan is actually testing the mask's safety himself by wearing a prototype. The normal type of mask, like the one he's wearing here, has outside air coming in from the gaps every time he breathes. Taking that into consideration, that sort of mask for sure prevents you from spraying droplets into the air, but it ends up being weak protection against infection of the virus. This sort of mask I'm wearing, which comes with a device like this, is much, much safer. The virus and other small particles in the air adhere to the filter in the device. And clean air is conducted through the pipe and enters the mask through a hole above the ear. The battery-operated respiration apparatus is portable and allows the wearer to move around. This produces air many dozens of times cleaner than ordinary masks do and allows the wearer to breathe safe air. Our mission is always to propose solutions. We come up with ways of tackling problems and resolving them. One news story spurred Chan to invent his mask respirator. In May 2020, it was reported that a few middle school students in China had died during gym classes while wearing masks. If it wasn't for the news, I wouldn't have developed this mask. The news about children who died. The moment I saw that, I realized just how suffocating wearing a mask can be. It can kill people. Until then, and I'm sure other people are exactly the same, but I never associated masks with death. I felt I had come up with something, so, well, I, I began up thinking ways to make a breathable mask. And when you think about it, ultimately, I can't just sit and watch weak or fragile people struggle. That includes sick people, children, even pets. Children are vulnerable, but so are the ill, right? It just pains me to see them so weak. That's the sort of thing that really motivates me into action. Chang Gok Fook, who has spent his life developing technology to save valuable lives, writes his motto in Vietnamese. To do things passionately and thoroughly. I can multitask in my head, so when I tire myself out thinking about one thing, I switch modes and go on to the next. Therefore, I'm always thinking, and one idea after another just keeps coming out. From Chan, the most important thing now is to spend precious time with his grandchildren. Children are essentially cute, and their train of thought, the way they think, is fascinating. They try to come up with ways to do the impossible. That process is amazing. So they sometimes probably act as my inspiration. <laughs>